Okay. Thank you, Dr. Urban. Thank you for a kind introduction. I want to say uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, ladies and gentlemen, because right now I know you are in a different part of the world. I want to thank Gaslick to give me the great opportunity uh, for the young dentist to have a presentation with so many experts, with uh, so many ex and professors. Uh, today, my topic would be the management of severe bone defect in the aesthetic zone under the minimal invasive concept. As I said, I'm, I'm my name is Yue San from China. I'm a prosthodontist and also I'm an implant surgeon. First, I want to give a very brief introduction for myself. Around 10 years ago, I got my license from a school of somatology, Wuhan University. And around four, uh, three years later, I got my uh, first PhD degree from Wuhan University. And, uh, and after another four years, I got my second PhD degree from Robert University, Nijmegen, the Netherlands. Right now, I'm working at the Department of Prosthetics, Wuhan University, China. And last year, I was very honored to be selected as one of the ITI scholars. I went to Indiana University. Uh, I learned from uh, Dr. and Professor D. Morton, Polito, and Wei Shaoling for one year program. This is our dental school. It is now is one of the best dental school in China. And this is uh, our university. This is Wuhan University's campus. It was called one of the most beautiful campuses in the world. So just like everybody likes a beautiful city, likes beautiful campus, likes beautiful uh, university, everybody likes beautiful appearance. So that means the aesthetic is very, very important for everyone. That also means when we treat a patient in the aesthetic zone, we have to face challenge. The challenge is we have to find out where the patient wants to be in this zone. In other words, we also have to find a solution. We also have to find the implant therapy in this zone. Luckily, just like the Daniel Butzer uh, professor just said, we found this paper. The professor told us we should follow two different objectives. One is the primary objective. That means we have to give the stable objective, uh, give the stable optimal uh, aesthetic outcome with high predictability, and also give the patient a low risk of complication. And if possible, we should try our best to reduce the number of surgical interventions try to reduce the possible pain and mobility and also try to reduce the healing and treatment time. This is our aim. So if possible, we should give the patient good treatment. And also if we can give the patient good stability for the aesthetic outcome, we should give the patient minimal invasive treatment. We call it MIT. But we still know the reality in our situation is we know in our office every day we have to face, we have to treat this kind of patient because the tooth extraction, we, we know the bone resorption. So when we open the flap, we normally find this kind of situation. We found the bone um, resorption. We found a severe bone defect horizontally and also the vertically. This is our reality. So my question today is, can we deal with this kind of uh, um, defect with an MIT with a minimal invasive treatment. This is my topic today. Let's look at the uh, first patient. This is Mr. K. When he came to our department, he wanted to have the implant placement immediately. But, but of course, we cannot finish this one because we, we can see a lot of different situations, a lot of different problems. We can see the alignment of teeth were not so good. We can see the limited space. We can see the gingival stage was not so good. So we have to do the orthodontic treatment first. After the orthodontic treatment, we give the patient the proper space. I mean, middle and distally. But when we check the common CT, we found the narrow bone. So... I know a lot of uh, doctors and professors may take the stages bone augmentation because in this way, we can have the better quantity and the quality of the bone augmentation. We can decrease the exposure of the surface of implant. And also we can increase the stability of the implant. But can we change our mind? For instance, can we use a small diameter of the implant? Because in this way, we can also finish the implant implant uh, placement, and also we can decrease the exposure of the surface and also increase the stability of the patient. And also I checked the systematic review and also in meta-analysis, we can see actually there are three different categories of narrow diameter of the implants, especially for the third one, I mean from 3.3 3 .3 to 3.5, it has a similar implant survival with standard diameter of the implants. So in case one, I just choose the Stroma 3.3 bone level implant to finish this uh, case. It's very easy for me. I open the flap, I see the, you know, I see the narrow bone. I, I did the uh, uh, tension release and I just place a narrow implant placement. 
And then I use the gasket BIOS to cover exposure of the surface very easy. Then I use the BioGAN membrane to protect everything. We can see when the patient came for the follow-up for the suture removal, we can see the stage was, was nice and stable, all the things were healthy. So after three to four, after four months, we uh, give the patient the provision to create the uh, emergent profile. And after two months, emergent profile creation, we get a final prosthesis for the patient. We can see if we compare it with the priest one, we get the final prosthesis, we get the final result with the um, aesthetic outcome. And the patient was satisfied with the final outcome. And also, even after two years follow-up, we can see the stated, we can see the gingival, we can see the contour was good. And also we checked the evaluation from a bone level. We can see after two years, we can see the bone level was stable. We can see the comparison picture with the follow-up from beginning to the end. We can see all the status are good or stable. And we give the patient a final prosthesis and we give the patient a good and aesthetic outcome. So the first take home message is sometimes I know we may face to this kind of situation with a severe bone loss, but maybe you can consider to use a narrow diameter implant. It could be one option of the MIT. But we all know that we have to face an even more challenging case. We have to even more difficult case. So this is Mr. L. When he came to our department, I saw the vertical and the horizontal defect. I checked the common CT. I found there's a large defect. There's a large concave and a large defect vertically and also horizontally. So I want to give the stage of the bone augmentation because that is safer. But the question is, how should I take this uh, treatment? Do I always need to use a bone block, unlabeled, um, unlabeled bone block, or can I use the other treatment? This is my question. So in this patient, I just opened the flap. I found the con I found the concave defect, and they just made the perforation, and then I just use a very tiny TNT screw to support in the vertical direction because you know vertical direction is the most difficult part for us to do the bone augmentation. And then I used the bone chips from the patient. I mean the autologous bone chips, and then I mixed with the bio particles to make the mixture. And then I get the blood from the patient. Why I want to do this? Because I want to make sticky bone. Why I want to use sticky bone rather than bios particles because sticky bone was sticky. The so sticky means I can connect it all the particles with the autologous bone chips together. And it is very easy for me to manipulate, to place, to cut. And I just cut one part of the sticky bone. I just put onto the surface of the defect. And then I just cover all of them with the biogen membrane. It's very easy. And then I just use this minimal invasive treatment to close the, the suture. And then after a while, we can see after uh, several months, we can see from the CBCT, we can see the evaluation. We can see the yellow part indicated we get a successful uh, vertical and also horizontal bone augmentation. If we compare the previously and afterwards, we can see we get a good result. So the second take home message is sometimes we can also think about to use the tenting screw to give us the support. And also we can try to use the sticky bone because it was sticky. It could be one option of MIT for, MIT for the patient with severe bone defect. This is a picture from my surgery. This picture from my patient, we can see the beautiful uh, sticky bone pictures. But I'm thinking why sticky bone can give us the good result and stable. So I did the SEM observation for sticky bone from the sample of the patient. We can see the fibrin glue from the blood can connect all the particles together. This is a secret. This is a magic of the sticky bone can connect all the things stable. And also even after three months, we can see the fibrin glue was still there. It connected all the things together and stable. So this is sticky bone. This is why I love sticky bone. But one day I'm thinking, can we make our life easier? Because you know, not everybody likes to, you know, get blood from him or her. Can we make our life easier? So suddenly I found another picture. This is a picture also from my surgery, from my patient. This is a gastric bias collagen picture. Actually, I saw they are look similar. They just look like each other. So I checked the information from bios collagen. I found actually the collagen is just like the network. It just connected all the particles together. It's just like the sticky bone. And it's very easy because I don't need to get blood from a patient. So let's look at the third patient. This is Miss L. 
When she came to our department, she wants to do the implant placement. In the beginning, I thought there was some one tooth missing. But when I checked the common CT, I checked, you know, the situation was not so good. We found it as the impacted tooth. Of course, we have to extract the impacted tooth, right? We have to extract the tooth. We can see there's a huge defect. So I want to ask you, ladies and gentlemen, what is your opinion? What is your suggestion? Do you want to do the sticky bone or do you want to do the staged bone augmentation? Or do you want to do use the bone block or do you want to do the use the bias collagen? Let's do the poll. So, and now it's your turn, dear audience. Please grab your smartphone, type in menti.com. And as you see right now in the chat function, there is, just, there is a six digit code. First, you have to type in menti.com. Then you type in the six digit code and then you are directly diverted to the question of uh, Dr. Yusa. Please give us our opinion and we will come back to it in the Q&A section. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, let's check the uh, result afterwards. So I will continue my presentation. So I just want to know your opinion, your treatment plan for this kind of large defect. So in my case, I just choose the membrane, I just use biogen membrane to cover the palatal part of the defect. Then I use the bios collagen to form, to create, to rebuild the palatal wall. And then I place it implant immediately, I mean immediate implant placement. And then I use the helium bottom to form the tenting effect. I didn't use the, uh, the, the, ten, the tenting uh, screw, I just used the, the helium bottom to form the supporting, to form the tenting effect. Then I use bios collagen to form the coronally and also for the buccally to recover, you know, the horizontal and also the vertical direction of the bone defect. This is a, a occlusive view of the bios collagen and also from by guide, by guide protect everything. So we can check the status where the patient came for office for the suture removal. We can see all the status were good, all the, all the, all the uh, gingival, all the contours nice and good. So we also check the common CT after five months after surgery, we can see there is a good and successful bone augmentation uh, with the help of the helium abutment effect and also with the bios collagen. We create the bone. So we can see the buccally, horizontally, and also for the vertically. So finally, we give the patient the final prosthesis. And after two years, after two years follow-up, we can see all stators, the gingival, uh, uh, the stators, the contour, all the, all the things are good and nice and stable. And after two years follow-up, we can see the CBCT. The CBCT also give us a good result for the buccal bone, for the coronally, for the vertical and horizontally. So the third take-home message I want to share with you is sometimes maybe you shoot to combination. We use a combination of tinting technique. You don't need to use the uh, tinting screw. You can also choose to use the helium abutment and also you can choose to use gas leak bios collagen. It could facilitate your treatment for the patient. So my dear friends, I want to share with you today is when someday you face this kind of severe bone defect in the aesthetic zone, maybe you can consider to use narrow diameter implants. Maybe you can use the, the tinting technique, maybe, I mean, the uh, tinting screw or helium abutment. Maybe you can use the linked bone graft. I mean, the linked. You can choose the bone, sticky bone. You can choose the bios collagen. It make your life easier. I don't mean, I didn't mean that you, you have to reject the bone block. No, I just mean you have to consider sometime. Maybe you can give you some suggestions for the MIT for the minimal invasive treatment. This is all I want to share with you with the presentations. So last minute, I want to, say, I'm a very young dentist. So for me, how I understand this word, because I mean, dentist actually is three words. We are doctors, we are engineer, we are artists. We have to travel best to use the newly developed products. We have to travel best to, new, to use the newly developed technique. We have used our imagination to solve the problems in our clinic. And also, what is implant for me? Implant for me is also three words and plan to, we are planning to, we are planning to, we are give the patient beauty. This is our aim, this is our dream, this is our purpose in this aesthetic zone. 
So uh, lastly, I want to uh, thank Gatlik to give me the great opportunity to have my presentation. I want to give acknowledgement to my director, to my uh, teachers, my supervisors, my nurses, and my colleagues in my department. And also, I want to give many thanks to my students in my group. Thank you for suggestion and thank you for support. Uh, I hope right now you stay safe with your with your family, stay safe and stay healthy. I hope everybody come to visit Wuhan, visit China, visit our university and visit our hospital. I hope you to stay well with your family, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you very much. Uh, this is my email. If you want to connect with me, just give me the email. And this is a QR words, a QR codes from my department and also from me in WeChat channel. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Urban. Thank you for introduction. This is my presentation. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much for your very, very interesting presentation. I think you did a great job in uh, treating these defects. I, um, <clears throat> uh, I, okay, here's the poll. Yes. I think. <laughs> yes. And what we see is without my glasses. Okay, without your glasses, okay. Yeah, immediate implant placement with guys like uh, BIOS and uh, collagen. Yes. And then that was the number, that was uh, the bad, I mean, number one. Number two was a staged bone augmentation, which is always safe. Yes. <laughs> uh, using uh, and a delayed implant placement. And the third one was a staged bone augmentation with only bone. Blood. I would say, honestly, I would. I don't think this defect was a defect that I would ever do that. And other treatments also. But of course, we have to appreciate each other's opinion. The, the most important is what is the end result. So I think you did a great yes. job. Thank you very much.